Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, in today's presentation, we are going to learn on how to prepare the uh, consolidated statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. And this is uh, again for a simple group structure that consists of a parent and the subsidiary. So there's only one parent, of course, here and there's a subsidiary called WIMA. So let us look at the question. Okay, so you have the following financial statements relating to Tanaka and Wima. And this is the financial statement which is the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income because you can see here there are some information on revaluation surplus for these two companies. And that was for the year ended 30th of June 2016. So this is the reporting date. And we are going to prepare the financial statement for this current financial year end, which is the consolidated statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, which is the requirement of the question, which uh, we are not going to answer question A, we're just going to focus on this question with 30 marks, which is part B and part C, which is to prepare the consolidated statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. And the uh, extract of the group retained profit to be shown together with the non-controlling interest in the consolidated statement of changes in equity. So let's look at the question now. So we're given the uh, revenue and also all the income and uh, the expenses here. So of Wima and Tanaka. So let us look at when is the date of acquisition and before that the consolidated statement of uh, profit or loss will combine the uh, the uh, income and expenses of the subsidiary with that of the parent and then it will exclude the intercompany transaction so whatever reported would be those result of the group with those of the outsiders or the external parties no intercompany transaction will be reported in the group financial statement so let's look at the first information here. You have the information on the issued share capital and the retained profit and revaluation surplus of all companies which refers to Tanaka and Wima on this date. So the information given here for the retained profit, this is on 1st of July. This is actually the beginning of the current year. So if you look, the current year would be the year end was 30th of June. 2016 so this is 1st of July 2015 which is the beginning of current year and this is the current financial year and and this one I call it CY which is referring to the current year so you have the information on the retained profit brought forward which is actually the one at the beginning of the current year the brought forward figure for the revaluation surplus as well right so uh, that was what happened let us look at uh, the information you have been informed that there have been no new issue of equity shares in the group since july to 2013 meaning that first of july 2013 until um, the date that the consolidation will take place there have been no issuance of ordinary shares capital so meaning to say that the only shares balance brought forward on first of uh, July 2015 is also equivalent to uh, the uh, amount that you can see here, which is 240 million and 125 million for Tanaka and Wima respectively. So that was just information, and you would see this. Let's look, let's look at the second information. You have the information that Tanaka acquired 70% of the equity shares in Wima. So having acquired more than 50% of the equity shares in another company, that means investee company, Wima now is a, a subsidiary to Tanaka. That happens on the date of acquisition, which is on 1st of July. 2013 so if you can refer back to the timeline diagram that i draw here this is actually first of july 2014 and this is first of july 2013 this is the date of acquisition this is the date that you acquire the shares in wima so it has been two years in the prior year and now in the current year 
you have already acquired up till the date of the consolidation that has been oh that has been three years so there were three years and two years were during the pre uh, during the prior year and uh, the current year is 30th of june 2019 so this is telling you that the date of acquisition happens in the prior year so you have the information that this is the important date, 1st of July 2013, and there are no uh, preference shares in the subsidiary, no preference shares information in the uh, parent as well. So there is no, no such thing as preference dividend that we are going to talk in this particular question. So the fair value of the uh, WEMAS, which is the subsidiary net asset on the date of acquisition, which is on 1st of July 2013, were all equivalent to the carrying amount with the exception of these properties. So there are properties that had a fair value of 6 million in excess of the carrying value. So simply put, that is a revaluation surplus. But revaluation surplus is the revaluation surplus arising on the date of acquisition. Arising on the date of acquisition. So what you need to take note is you need to find out the uh, revaluation surplus and make sure that you include this in the calculation of the fair value of the net asset on the date of acquisition in case you are going to calculate goodwill as part of the requirement so these are the situation that took place so this happened here which is the revaluation surplus happens here to be how much six million so therefore not only revaluation surplus because properties have a remaining useful life of six years so therefore, what has to be done is that to take note that the remaining useful life is six years is here, six. So I have to use a different color, I guess, to just, uh, you know, differentiate. Okay, let's just pick up a blue. Yeah, so this is what happened. I put here revaluation surplus. And that would be 6 million. And a revaluation surplus, just now we were talking about the uh, remaining useful life, remember? So remaining useful life on this date was 6 years. So that 6 years, it means that you need to go and adjust for the uh, depreciation. And as you can recall, a revaluation surplus will relate to under provision. There has been an under provision of depreciation. For your information, one is in the prior year and another one will be in the current year. Prior year means for the first two years. So you need to go and adjust for the depreciation later and uh, also in the current year. So the one in the prior year will be for two years, six million, divided by the remaining useful life, six, six years, and you will get two million. And this two million... You need to times two first. So that is actually the under provision of depreciation that must be adjusted in the prior year. And the one in the current year would be six million. So it is six million here divided by six years. And that is for just one year. And that would be one million. This is the one that will be adjusted in the current year, which is in the consolidated statement of profit or loss. We need to go and do that adjustment. So what you need to do is you need to go and first uh, add the revaluation surplus, which is the revaluation surplus here was 6 million. So this one must be included in the prior year adjustment in the subsidiaries retained profit brought forward. And for the under provision in the prior year, that also must be adjusted in the retained profit brought forward of the subsidiary. Uh, which is the uh, adjustment for the two years since you need to go and also show the workings for the retained profit brought forward so that one will be done later so let's go to the second one and the uh, under provision as i mentioned to you just now that would be actually also for three years that you need to reflect so one million is here for the under provision one million is here and then another one million is here, current year, prior year, 
and also another prior year remember this is the date of acquisition 1st of july 13 and this is the year end 30th of june uh, 16 right 30th of june 16 okay next look at the uh, second information uh, the second information is on the uh, dividend on the dividend and you have the second half of the current year you are informed in the second half meaning that in the second half uh, somewhere from 1st of january 16 up until 30th june 16 we must sell goods um, that was not about dividend that was about uh, sale of goods sold goods to tanaka so wima is the subsidiary and tanaka is the parent so this is again an upstream upstream sale and what happened is that the goods that will intercompany purchase is 10 million that must be uh, reflected in the consolidated statement of profit or loss by removing that from the uh, cost of sale as well as from the revenue however there was a profit being made for the sales of 3 million and you are informed this 3 million half of these goods that were being sold off to the um, parent company still remain in the inventory of the parent company so therefore we need to go and make some provision for unrealized profit so who is the seller here the seller again for your information is the subsidiary so subsidiary needs to make some adjustment for the unrealized profit and that would be how much would it be it would be 3 million and that would be multiplied by half because you are informed half of the goods remain and so so that will give you 1.5 million and this has to be adjusted in the uh, the uh, consolidated statement of profit or loss which is to be adjusted in the cost of sale yeah you need to adjust under cost of sale to add them back and also must be adjusted in the non-controlling interest to show how much is the profit attributable to the non-controlling interest you need to go and do adjustment for the second item that relates to the unrealized profit that happened in the current year so that was the case there so let us look at um, what you have for these two items before we f uh, proceed with the remaining adjustment but uh, let me just show you what we have done here so let's start with the revenue so first you need to identify that we are going to consolidate the uh, revenue and expenses for 100% whole of the revenue of WIMA even though we acquired just 70% but the revenue of WIMA will be consolidated uh, 100% so the revenue here we are talking about the one given in the question so let's see how much 3375 for Tanaka and WIMA has 180 so you need to go and do the adjustment and the adjustment here the first adjustment is the intercompany sales and therefore you have uh, the intercompany sales that was given in information number three that i just just mentioned earlier on and the second one is to add up the one of tanaka cost of sale to the one of Bima. make sure you put the sign the plus sign there right and uh, you will do that you have to adjust the intercompany purchase because to the point of view of Wima it was a sale but to the point of view of Tanaka that was a purchase and that was intra-group transaction and that's the reason that we are doing the elimination so what we will do is to eliminate so we will eliminate the unrealized profit as well so the unrealized profit on the closing inventory we just calculated so at the end what this is the figure that we reported as the cost of sale in our group financial statement okay so that was the thing there right let's look at the second item that you have in the question let's look at the question so not the second item actually it is actually the uh, fourth additional information so in fourth additional information what you see is there is a sale of equipment sale of equipment and if you notice again the sale of equipment here is where tanaka is again the buyer so tanaka bought equipment and the seller here again is 
the subsidiary. So that is the situation seller. The equipment was sold at a profit and that happens during the year. When that happens during the year, you need to go and adjust for the profit if the profit is being recognized in the uh, books of um, WIMA because WIMA is the seller. Here you are informed it was recognized in other income. So in the seller, what you need to do is you need to go and remove the profit. How much is the profit? 2 million. So that will be removed from the other income. So I will re remove from the other income when I prepare the consolidated statement of financial uh, statement of profit or loss. How much? 2 million. And that will be done. Right? You will have to go and remove that. And that was relating to equipment. So if you are preparing this together with a consolidated statement of financial position, you also need to adjust the equipment account. But since this is just the preparation of consolidated statement of profit or loss, that is not necessary. But when we do this, this is in our SOPL. We will be adjusting this in our consolidated statement of profit or loss. And again, when you have the profit being removed, you also being informed that that uh, asset which is the equipment has a remaining useful life of five years so if that is the case you also need to do another adjustment which is the over provision of depreciation there was an excess of depreciation that has been done uh, by uh, the uh, buyer and that has to be reflected in seller so over provision would be you take two million and you will divide by five years and this will give you uh, 400,000. This 400,000 must be removed. And where do you remove? Depreciation are normally included in the expenses. So if you can see here, you have the operating expenses of WIMA. So we will remove here. One, the thing that we will remove is the unrealized profit, which is on the sale of that particular it was an equipment okay and we also will remove the uh, so-called uh, depreciation the over provision so we have to go and uh, make adjustment later for the over provision because here we are talking about wima is the seller so the current year uh, item and at the same time this over provision not only in the sopel you also need to go and adjust in the non-controlling interest for the current year, the share of the non-controlling interest also must be adjusted with the over provision of depreciation. So that was the thing that happened. And let us look at number five. Number five is about a situation that you have intercompany management fee. Tanaka charged uh, WIMAS the management fee. So to Tanaka, that was an income. However, to WIMA, which is the subsidiary that was a management fee expense to Tanaka. This is a parent company, the holding company. So the fees were uh, amounting to 600,000. And you are informed that Tanaka recognized this in other income and WIMA will has, have already recognized that as uh, the operating expenses. So what to be, need to be done is to go and exclude that intra-group uh, management fee by removing that from other income so debit other income 600,000 and you will credit the operating expenses because we want to remove the expenses which are intercompany transaction and this will appear in the line item other income we will see this in a short while and how much would it be 600 so that will also appear in the line item operating expenses which is intending to remove the intra group management fees income and expenses number six number six is about uh goodwill so goodwill has been given so you don't have to calculate the goodwill if it's not given you may have to calculate the goodwill because here there is an impairment that has taken place 10 percent and you're informed at the end of the year at the end of the year means it refers to 30th of june 16 which is the current financial year end and 10% was being impaired. So if you can still recall, when you impair, you will go and record that in the profit of the um, parent company, Tanaka. But here, Tanaka, it is in the consolidated statement of profit or loss. So go and add that to where to? Go and add that to the operating expenses because this is 
uh, not yet recorded. So you're going to add how much? 1.3 million times 10%. So it will be 130,000. So this is actually 10% times 100, uh, 1.3 million. And that will be adjusted in the goodwill. So goodwill, if you prepare a consolidated statement of financial position, then only you will adjust for that particular impairment. But here, our impact would be in the operating expenses that we need to go and add to the operating expenses. Right. So you are informed, number seven, we'll be doing it in a short while. Right. Um, that was relating to the statement of changes in equity where Tanaka and Wima have proposed and declared final or dividend. Final or dividend, meaning that uh, these are the dividend that were declared by the uh, company at the end of the financial year, ended the 30th of June, and that was 5 cents. 5 cents, um, that has to be um, multiplied by the units, so you need to go and do that. And then uh, you have the information that they are not just, uh, not just Wima, but both Wima and Tanaka. So the dividend that were declared will be reflected in the consolidated statement of changes in equity because this is appropriation from the retained profit. So this is not going to be um, de deducted in the uh, consolidated uh, statement of uh, uh, fine, profit or loss because you are informed the dividends have not been recorded in the respective book so you need to go and record and that will be reflected in the consolidated statement of changes in equity since you are using the retained profit for the year and the last information here is on the information of the valuation of non-controlling interest which is at its proportionate share of the fair value of the identifiable assets on the acquisition date and you are also informed that depreciation are provided using straight line method on yearly basis. So this is already being done earlier for the depreciation. And the last statement is about the how the profit or loss has accrued evenly throughout the year. Right? It was assuming to have a steady increase in the profit. Right. Okay. Let us look at the consolidated statement of uh, uh, profit or loss first before we proceed with adjustment number number seven so we will do and do our um, part on the uh, statement of profit or loss so let's look at this so you will just add the other income this is taken from the uh, statement of profit or loss individually now i'm going to adjust with the uh, intercompany transaction remember i have mentioned and i have done the adjustment earlier that the other income uh, where the gain on disposal in number three, information number three, information number four, sorry. So I put the cross reference here, information number four, if you are, would like to check. Uh, the unrealized profit on equipment, which is intercompany transaction, is now being removed. Not only that, we are also removing the intercompany management fees, which is adjustment number, number five. Adjustment number five, let's just have a recap of that. This is the one here and the one here remember the unrealized profit here we are removing from the other income and this is uh, the one also from other income okay so you have the figure there now we move on to the operating expenses first show the two uh, addition or the com combination of the item and then now the adjustment for the under provision of depreciation remember this under provision is the current year under provision of depreciation as a result of the revaluation surplus so i put that cy right and if you want to recall which one this is here is the one here the one that you have done here the one million that was being under provided it also in the current year after the revaluation has been uh, reflected in the uh, financial statement of we, uh, the uh, uh, group, right? So let's look at that part. And now you have another adjustment which, which also needs to be adjusted, which is the intercompany management fee. And one more thing that needs to be reflected is the over provision of depreciation for the equipment. And that was uh, item or the additional information number four. So you can go back to number four. 
and you will see that there was an over provision that we have to go and adjust in the SOPL and that also needs to be reflected in the non-controlling interest share of profits for the current year. So that is what we have included there and the last thing is the impairment of goodwill. So the impairment of goodwill are included there and here there are some workings that you may want to also refer to that I have done the working here for the uh, items in operating expenses as well as the cost of sale. Next is to find out our profit before tax. Our profit before tax would be 262520570. Sorry. The income tax, you just simply add them. No adjustment whatsoever. And the profit after tax, of course, you'll be getting them. It would be 221570. Now comes to the part on the other comprehensive income in this particular question we need to include other comprehensive income at the bottom of the profit after tax since there is and uh, there are other comprehensive income from these two companies so you can see here from the question it was five thousand and four thousand take that first and don't get confused with the uh, items of uh, excess uh, of the fair value that you have in number two this is not the one arising in the current year this is the one that happened in the date uh, or on the date of acquisition that was way back on july 20, uh, 2013 so that is not going to be reflected or being added here nothing will be added because this is not revaluation that took place in the current year so we just simply add what you have unless the revaluation happened in the current year we need to go and include that and add to the existing um, balance of the revaluation surplus in that particular year so done with that and let's look at uh, our um, profit attributable to uh, the uh, next part which is to go and show the split between what will be shared by the parent the equity holder of the parent and what will be the share of profits in the subsidiary remember to take the correct figure which is this figure this one which is the profit after tax do not take the total comprehensive income take the profit uh, after tax or profit for the year and now work out your uh, profit attributable to the uh, non-controlling interest so if you do that you would see that the profit attributable to the non-control interest is given in the question. Take the one in the question that was in your question. Go and check your question. It is here. Go check. Take your papers and check. Okay, this one. Right. Let's look at the information. What are the adjustments? We have done a lot of things earlier on. So the first thing that you need to adjust is the unrealized profit on closing inventory remember i mentioned earlier on that the uh, seller is the subsidiary company when seller is the subsidiary company you need to go and adjust not only in the sopel but also in the non-controlling interest uh, calculate, uh, workings as well so you will be doing that so that was the case secondly that is also going to deduct you are also going to adjust with the uh, unrealized profit on the sale of equipment since the subsidiary is the seller and the sale of equipment took place in the current year. The next one is to adjust the, for the over provision of depreciation. These two items here, the one that you have here, these are actually referring to what you have done much earlier upper part here. Let me just show you. This is the one here as well as this is the one that you have done in info this is info number info four okay and this over provision of depreciation was also info four okay info four should be four there right next is another thing that you need to take note which is very important that is the current year under provision of depreciation of properties. Remember earlier on, we have the over provision, uh, the uh, under provision of properties, 1 million under provision. That should be under provision. So this is from information number, number 3. So it is actually number 2. So this is number 2. So go and check number 2. We have done the workings. So this is good for you to cross-refer whenever you are referring or doing your uh, revision. 
So next item that is I am putting blue here because I want to highlight the fact that there is no preference dividend. And if you see here, you would like to check what is the dividend, but there are no preference dividends since there are no there are no preference shares. So all uh you will get the profit attributable to the non-controlling shareholder would be 17310. This is a non-controlling interest uh, percentage. So you have 17310 and that will be here. And the equity holder of the parent will be the different. Next is to go and work out how much is the total comprehensive income, which is this figure, total comprehensive income. that is attributable to the uh, uh, non-controlling interest as well as to the equity holder. So here is the working. First, what you need to do is you will take the profit attributable to the non-controlling interest, the one that you have calculated here. And now you need to go and look at what are the revaluation surplus in current year. So you have been informed that there was a revaluation surplus in the subsidiaries uh, statement of profit or loss the one here so this one this is the one that you, we need to go and reflect the share of the non-controlling interest since this is the one happening in the current year so you take four thousand and the share of the non-controlling interest would be four thousand times thirty percent so that will give you 1200 and this figure 18510 will be shown here and the difference between 230530 and 518510 will be the equity or the share of the parent company in the total comprehensive income of this subsidiary okay let's look uh, and do our next part which is the consolidated statement of changes in equity and what we are just focusing here is the extract of the retained profit column only together with the non-controlling interest so this is just extract of this this two items non-controlling interest and the group retained profit so do first thing first i would suggest you to do what is profit for the year which is from this particular working so we just take this and put it to the correct side and now you need to find out what are the group retained profit at the beginning of the year before you do that do one more thing which is also simpler which is the other comprehensive income the revaluation surplus for your information we are going to show that in the non-controlling interest and that is the one of the subsidiary right the one of the subsidy that was 1200 and next one is uh, the uh, to calculate the balance brought forward for the group retained profit so let's start with the one at beginning of the year 1st of july 15 uh, for the uh, subsidiary and the parent we start with the parent so this is the one of the parent that is taken from the question so the question, where is it? You might wonder. This is the one here, given on 1st of July, 2000 and 6000. The 2000, you will show under the parent, uh, under the subsidiary here. Sorry, 50,000 and 90,000. Take the correct figure. Make sure you take the correct figure. <coughs> Then you need to go and remove with the pre-acquisition profit. Here there is a pre-acquisition profit on the day of acquisition given in the question. It was 10 million. This is the figure, 10 million. Okay. If you have a loss, just add them. And now this is the post-acquisition profit. And you need to do one prior year adjustment, which is the one that I have mentioned much earlier which is on the under provision of depreciation for the two years, uh, which was for 30th of June 14 and 30th of June 15, the one that I have drawn here, which is on the uh, situation relating to our prior year adjustment. And remember, uh, the adjustment for depreciation, 1 million, 1 million, so it all together was 2 million. And it is adjusted here, it was before the, current year that it took place in the prior period 
So after that, you will now get your um, share of the profit at the beginning of the year to be 70%. And the one for the group profit will now be 116,600. Show the figure here. Next, we will work out for our non-controlling interest. Non-controlling interest is to look at what is the non-controlling interest not on the date of acquisition. Please remember that. This is the non-controlling interest at the beginning of the year. Don't get confused with the non-controlling interest on the date of acquisition. But this is the one, the one at the beginning of the current year, 1st of July 15. So first put the information that you have. Ordinary shares, the amount was... Okay, it was here. 2125, the revaluation reason brought forward on 1st of July. Remember, revaluation reserve uh, surplus took place on 1st of July 13. And then by 1st of July 15, there was still a surplus there, 6,000. And the retained profit brought forward. This is from the question. Again, this is from the same figure here. 50, so it is going to be 50 here. And the prior year adjustment is the same figure here, which is the 2000 that you have from the information number 2, and that gives you 2000. And now the uh, figure for the uh, post acquisition profit of the subsidy at the beginning of the year, considering all the adjustment, is uh, going to be. Um, 48,000 and you will add up that with a 6,125 and there is no preference shares whatsoever so you just add up them all right and therefore that will give you 53,700 53,700 that will be your non-controlling interest Right. But before that, you need to go and multiply with 30%. Don't forget to do that. 179 multiplied by 20, uh, 30%. 30% is the non-controlling interest percentage in the subsidiary. So put the figure there. Make sure you do that. And now we are moving on to last part, which is the dividend. The dividend in the group retained profit will only reflect the dividend that were declared by the parent. So it would be 240,000, the amount, 240,000 times the uh, the uh, dividend that were given in cent, 5 cent. So if you can check, it was 5 cent here. So take the units, it was 1 ringgit each, so I'm taking... Uh, 240,000 ordinary shares in units and I will multiply with the uh, rate given. Rate given was, how much was that? It was here, 5, yeah, it was 5 cents. So just multiply that and that was one whole year, 12,000. And there's another one by the subsidiary that was also declared, but we will not report all here. We will just report under the non-controlling interest the one that is attributable to the non-controlling interest. The one attributable to the subsidiary, uh, uh, paid by subsidiary was 125,000 declared by subsidiary. 5% is the, the 5 cent is the, uh, the uh, rate of dividend. And remember, take the units, take the units because the units of shares in subsidiary was 125. Go and check that. It's the one here. Is it one ringgit? So it would be actually 125,000 units times one ringgit. Done with that. Don't, then don't forget to multiply with the percentage, 30% uh, that is the non-controlling interest. You can total up now your figure, 308860. Be careful if there is any transfer to reserve made by the parent and the subsidiary that will may perhaps need to be encountered for, but here none. Nothing, so we just do that. Okay, done with that. You are done with the uh, second part of it, which is to prepare the consolidated statement of changes equity and extract question. Till then, I hope you have learned a lot from this session.
and uh, please make sure that you have a solid foundation on the preparation of the consolidated statement of profit or loss especially when it involves uh, the evaluation surplus during the date of acquisition as well as in the current period and when there is no preference uh, shares available in both company with that i thank you for watching i'll see you when i will see you i'll see you in my next video with that have a pleasant day ahead and assalamualaikum